Who is Jesus Christ? How does God incarnate relate to the eternal Godhead? Is Jesus really the Savior of mankind? What caused Pilate to cry out, Behold the man! Discover new and exciting facts about the person of Jesus. Learn and appreciate the wonders of God's only begotten Son. As Dr. Lester Sumrall presents today's lesson on the person of Jesus Christ. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus, and it's a great honor to speak from the Word. We have three, th th three teaching syllabuses. We have one on God the Father, that is a very uh, beautiful one called the Almighty, seeing the Almighty. Then we have one on the Holy Spirit, on the person of the Holy Spirit, now one on the person of the Lord Jesus. Uh, all three of them, and that's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and each of them uh, deal with at least 24 different different lessons. We have come to the, uh, in, in this teaching syllabus, we have covered a lot of material. Uh, the person of the Lord Jesus before time, the, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ in incarnation, the, per, the relationship of Jesus Christ with the Almighty God and also with the Holy Spirit, the titles and positions related to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, the person of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, becomes the Son of Man, the person of Jesus Christ at the inauguration of His earthly ministry and so forth. And at this, at this study, we are studying the person of Jesus Christ meets the needy. Uh, that, that one is down my alley, I would say. That, that, that I get excited about. The person of Jesus Christ meets the needy of, of, of planet Earth. One of the characteristics of Jesus' ministry was that he befriended those who were outcasts. For example, the publicans who were disliked by the Jews, although they were Jews, and because they served the Roman government as tax collectors, uh, they were just as important to Jesus as other people were. And, and the Samaritans, who were half-breeds in blood and religion, were not accepted by the Jewish religionists, but Jesus preached to them and loved them, and, and, he, and he blessed them. In Matthew 9, 11, it says, when, when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? They wanted to have no fellowship at all of any kind with people who were not of their religious brand and people that were not living the way they wanted them to live. And, and Jesus broke through that. And they, they, they didn't falsely accuse him this time. They were telling the truth. He said, why is it that the Lord Jesus eats with publicans and sinners? Well, the only way you can get people saved is to get to know them and, and, to, and to, to lead them and guide them into salvation. All right. We have an illustration of, of it that they were right. Jesus brought salvation and joy to a publican's house. That's written down in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verse 1. Verse 1 says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Uh, when we take our visits to the Holy Land, uh, Jericho is right straight down the hill from Jerusalem. You can go sliding down there in 30 minutes. Uh, today, it used to be a, more than a day's journey at uh, one time, but uh, uh, today, you can go down there very, very quickly. And he was in Jericho, and there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was one of the chief <laughs> among the publicans. Yeah, he wasn't just a tax gatherer, buddy. He, he, was, he, he, was, he was a top man in it. And it also says he was very rich. So evidently, he didn't give it all to Rome. He kept a large portion of it for himself. And he sought to see Jesus. Isn't that amazing? A man that hasn't lived right, a, a man that, you know, hasn't loved God, he, he has a desire to see Jesus. And sometimes we're amazed, you know, the man that you think won't get saved does get saved. And the man that you think won't live right does live right. And the man that you think is hopeless is not hopeless at all. He receives the Lord as his Savior. But he sought to see Jesus, who he was. I think that was curiosity from what it sounds like there, who he was. And he could not for the press. There were just so many people there until he couldn't do it. And it says, he was a man of little of stature. Now, being a shorty is not always, you know, good. You know, sometimes it's better to be tall or something like that. But uh, he couldn't see anything. But sometimes people that are short have a very quick mind. So he ran before. Before. That means he got away out in front of the city block, out in front of everybody else. And he climbed up into a sycamore tree. And the, the Arabs down there still try to show you the same sycamore tree. And uh, they also have the same donkey that Jesus rode, so you have to be careful what you, 
You have to be careful what you buy. They'll even sell you the same rooster that, that, that crowed for Peter. Anyway, he ran before. He climbed up in a sycamore tree to see Jesus, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him. Now, here's the amazing thing. He knew his name. He said, Zacchaeus. Isn't that amazing? Uh, I imagine he fell out of that tree, to tell you the truth. <laughs> that he, he fell out of the tree. To think that here he was, a, a, an off-scouring of the earth, hated by religious people, uh, no fellowship with religious people at all. And, and here Jesus knew his name. And he said, uh, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. Today I must abide thy house. How do you like that kind of preacher? He tells you when he's coming home with you. Whether you've made any preparations for it or not, he says, today we're going to have steak at your house. Are you still here? All right. So I must abide at thy house. And Zacchaeus made haste. He came down and he received Jesus joyfully. Isn't that something? Somewhere between that limb and the ground, he got saved. Yeah, somewhere, uh, it was a quick movement there. But somewhere between the limb and the ground, he found Christ as a Savior. And when, uh, and when they saw it, they all marveled, saying th that he was gone to be a guest with a sinner. With a sinner. They didn't believe he'd gotten saved, you see. Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. But that was a good start right there. And if I have taken anything from anybody by false accusations... I restore him fourfold. I think that's what he was going to do. I'm afraid he hadn't maybe measured up to that before he hit the ground. I think he hit the ground with that confession. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to your house, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham. He may be a Roman tax collector, but he's also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And that's one of the greatest texts in the Bible. And it's related to one man getting saved. And Jesus saw him. And so we find that the Lord Jesus meets the needy. Uh, you may be an outcast of humans, but you're not an outcast with Jesus. If you have a desire to find Jesus, you can find him. And nobody can keep you from finding Jesus if you want to. Can you say amen? All right. Here we find also that a publican finds a justification. Uh, in, in Luke chapter 18 and verse 9, it's, as he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves. Now you see, there's, there's some doctrine coming in there. Trusted in themselves. People that trust in themselves to be saved are a, are a strange breed, you know. They can lift themselves by their own bootstraps. We call them humanists today. That they don't need God, they don't need salvation, but they're going to need a lot when it gets to eternity. They're going to need Jesus. But they trusted in themselves that they were righteous, and they despised others. And so two men went up in the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed and said, God, I thank you that I am not as other men are. They are extortioners. They are unjust. They are adulterers. Or even like this guy over here in the corner, that publican over there, that tax collector. I don't like him either. And I'd like for you to know, Lord, that, that I'm not that guy that, you know, that I've fast twice a week that you're watching, and that I give tithes of all that I possess. But now, the Bible says he didn't go home satisfied. And so, Jesus loved the poor man, the publican. The publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but he smote his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, I'm a sinner. And Jesus said, did the self-righteous man go home happy, or did the publican go home happy? And so, Jesus came to find justification, just as if you had never sinned, by forgiveness of saying, Lord, I am a sinner. And so the purse of Jesus meets the needy. He met it in the publican that was not justifying himself, but needed justification coming directly from God. All right, number three, the friendship of Jesus and the publicans caused a religious jealousy among the Pharisees. In Matthew 21, 28, what think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. Ooh, that's pretty bad. Afterward, the son repented, and, and he went and worked in the field that day. And the same, the same gentleman came to his second son and said, Go work in the field for me today. He answered and said, Yes, I'll go, sir. But he didn't go. 
How many know the kids will do that for you? One, two, three. Okay. Whither of the two did the will of the Father? They said unto him, the first one. Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you that the publicans <laughs> and the harlots shall go into the kingdom of heaven before you do. And that, that was hard preaching for those, for those people that thought they were so religious. And that was hard words. John came unto you, the, came unto you in the way of righteousness, and you believed him not. The, but the publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when ye had seen it, re, repented not afterward, that ye might believe upon him. And so the Lord Jesus said, the sinner that says, yes, I'll live right, and does not live right. But the sinner that says, no, I won't serve God, and he does serve God, that the one that obeys is the one that he loves. After these things, Jesus went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom and said unto him, follow me. Now he became one of the apostles. Now this is in Luke 5, 27. He rose up and followed him. Brother, he stopped taking in Roman money right away. He quit his job as a tax collector instantly. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house. Quite well off, as you can see. And there was a great company of publicans. <laughs> That's the only friends he had. And others that sat down with him. But the scribes, the religious people, and the Pharisees murmured against his disciples, even, you know, saying, why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And the disciples didn't have to answer back. Jesus said unto them, they that are whole, see, this whole lesson today has to do, Christ came to meet the needs of the, meet of the needy, needy people. They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick are the ones that need a physician. I came not to call the righteous, but I came to call repentance, uh, sinners to repentance. And so Christ, in meeting the, the needs uh, of, uh, of the needy, that when he went to meet those needs, uh, he found that the religious people didn't like it. And you might just find the same if you got real close to religion. There are some churches that if you're not of a certain uh, financial bracket, you're not even welcome there. They'd soon let you know that. And if you sit out in one of their pews where somebody else is supposed to sit there, just get to take you up and move you. It says, Mr. Jones has been sitting here for 20 years. Don't sit there. Well, bless God. Sitting where you want to. The main thing is to go to heaven. You believe me? The main thing is to go to heaven. And Luke 15, 1, And they drew near unto Jesus, all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. <laughs> you see, they, they, they were his crowd too. He, he went to eat dinner with them and he says, and they all drew near to hear him. But the Pharisees and scribes murmured saying, this man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake a parable saying, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. When he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and his neighbors, saying, Then rejoice with me. I have found my sheep that was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than ninety-nine just persons which need no repentance. Now, you see, sometimes we pick up a text like that, and we don't know the, the story around it, and, and we miss some of the real juicy things that belong to it. Jesus was showing here the hypocrites, religious hypocrites. Uh, he was having fellowship with people that were sinners, leading them to heaven, leading them to God. He said, I came to save those people, and I'm going to have fellowship with them. And these religious people uh, said, you shouldn't, you, you, you shouldn't do that. And Jesus said, well, if you've got, you got a hundred sheep and one of them goes away, don't you go get him? They had to, you know, say yes. Well, he said, that's what I'm looking for looking for these lost sheep of Israel, looking for the people that are in the byways and the highways and those that are outside and those that are hurt and those that are down and those that made mistakes and, and those that think there's no hope, I'm going to bring them hope, you see. And, and so he said, there's rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repented. But if people that say, I don't need God and I don't need help, he said, heaven don't do anything. They don't rejoice and they're not glad about it. And so in, in Matthew 99, uh, the, public, the publican becomes a disciple. We, were, we already mentioned that. And Jesus passed forth from thence, and he saw a man named Matthew, 
That's the same one that was Levi. Sitting at the receipt of customs and said to him, follow me. And he rose and followed him. And so he became one of his apostles. The names of the apostles, and he gives them. And, and in, in there, uh, he gives you, uh, way down in verse 3, and Matthew the publican. Uh, that, that, is, that is just a little uh, something I'd like to, 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 to say here. Uh, uh, it would be bad for a person to be an alcoholic. And after he got saved, it says, there's, there's Tom the drunk. You know, um, this man hadn't been a publican for a long time, at least three years, and they were still calling him Matthew the publican. You know, and I don't maybe think that's, that's the right thing to do. Uh, that if, if, if a man is a, uh, is a robber, and say, there's Robert the robber. Well, that's all fair. You know, anyway, uh, they were reminding everybody that this was a tax collector that got saved and became a preacher and became one of the great apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. On page, uh, on, on, on page 77, number 5, uh, here we have the story, a very familiar story, of a Samaritan woman who had had five husbands and a lover. And she, she was sure needy. You better believe it. She was at the bottom of the ladder. In fact, she had fallen off the last rung of the ladder, and she was gone. And in John 4 and 6, it, it tells us a story. Now, Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, therefore, being wearied, I mean, that Jesus got tired. He was the son of man. He got tired like you do. Uh, weary with his journey, uh, and he sat at the well, and it was the sixth hour. That would be noon, their, their time beginning at six o'clock in the morning. And a woman of Samaria came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me to drink. For his disciples had gone into the city to buy some bread. Then, then saith the woman of Samaria, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask us drink of me? which am a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealings, no dealings with the Samaritans. No dealings with the Samaritans. If you're not careful, the religious people will have no dealings with the sinners. No relationship at all. And when you become a club, you know what God wants you to be. God doesn't want a glorified club. Are you here? Yeah, God, God doesn't want that. You never want to have a place of sinners they're not welcome to. We have one great objective in life, and that's to win the lost at any cost. And we've got to keep that in our minds. And we must never lose it. Jesus said, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to you, give me a drink, you would, have, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. That must have been a surprise to that gal. She had never heard of any kind of water except Jacob's well in her life. And then immediately she took off after him. Do you think you're greater than our father, Jacob? Well, uh, Jacob was also belonged to the Jews, you know. The, the, the Samaritans were only half-breeds. And they were, they, they were part Babylonian and had Babylonian gods along with them. And so, he said, You're greater than my father, Jacob, who gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall never thirst. Aren't you glad he didn't quarrel with her about who Jacob was? He could say, you old half-breed, Jacob don't belong to you, he belongs to us. You know, like some of us talking about our church. And, uh, but he said, whosoever drinketh the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. You know, that, 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 has been my, that, that has been my experience of 50 years, that something came into me that, that I have never thirsted. I have never thirsted. Not natural water. But I've never thirsted for the things of the world. I got rid of them. I got fulfilled. And I have never thirsted. I have abundance of the life flowing through me that had given me perfect satisfaction for all these years. And I believe every one of us can have exactly the same. He shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him. It shall be him in him a well like artesian springing up into everlasting life. And that caught her attention. Man, she liked that everlasting life. The woman said, give me this water. You couldn't have, you know, you couldn't have, you know, you'd expect her to say that. Give me this water that I thirst not, neither, see, she got it all messed up with the natural. Neither come hither to, to draw water. Man, she wanted to stop work, and out of her would start flowing water. Can't people get the gospel mixed up and messed up, you know? It, it, it's remarkable. And, and so, 
he, he saw she was so messed up so that he just turned the direction. He said, all right, I'll do this. Uh, go, tell you, go call your husband and tell him to come. Hey, he hit, he hit right in the touchy spot, right in the tender place. The woman answered and said, I don't have any husband. Uh, Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five. I want to tell you that divorce is not new. I have had five, and he which thou now hast is not your husband. In, in that saidest thou truly. So she was living with a boyfriend. Now she didn't take time to go down and get registered. She'd been right down there five times registering, and she just wore out the registrar, and so she was just living with him without registering. She was a bad gal. <laughs> Says, whom thou now livest, thou hast truly said. And boy, and boy, I tell you, she stopped wanting that eternal water real quick. Uh, she said, the woman said to him, I perceive that you are a prophet. Uh, he, she had her life story revealed by a stranger. And the woman then left her water pot and she went into the city and said to, to the men, all of them, come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Isn't that amazing? The pagans knew about it, the coming of Christ. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? She knew about a Messiah that had to come. She knew about a Christ, the anointed one that had to come, even though she was outside of the teachings of Israel. Isn't that amazing? Sometimes a heathen seemed to know more about some things than some people do that are bound up in churches. It is very, very, very remarkable. They, they went out of the city and they came unto Jesus. And there he taught them. And later they said, now we believe not because of what you said, but we believe because of what we have heard ourselves. And he stayed with those people and preached to them and had himself a revival there. Now, this lesson is trying to show us that Christ came to meet the needs of the people that were needy. Whatever the need was, he was ready to meet them. This woman had a need, and you better believe it. And, and, and Jesus met that total need. And though she was a dirty adulterer, gave her a new life and made her as clean as an angel. I want you to know that Jesus is still in that business of changing people's lives and making them good by his mighty power. Number six, Jesus gave a parable. Jesus gave a parable about a good Samaritan. And this is one of the finest stories there is. It's a story that's told to little children when they're young. It's a, it's a story that excites people when they hear about it. It's in Luke chapter 10. Beginning at verse 30, Jesus said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Jericho was an accursed place. Jerusalem was a blessed place. He went from the blessing to the curse. He went from Jerusalem down to Jericho. It's amazing how Jesus told little stories. So you have to forgive preachers for telling little stories, you know, because that's like Jesus did. He says, A certain man went from Jerusalem, the place of worship, down to Jericho, the place of a curse. And he fell among thieves on his way down. And it's very mountainous. It is very mountainous. I couldn't tell you the number of mountains between Jerusalem and Jericho. It might be a hundred. You just never saw so many hills and valleys as there are between Jerusalem and Jericho. And he fell among thieves. And those thieves stripped him of his clothes. And they beat him up and wounded him. And they departed, leaving him half dead. I don't know which half it was, but he was in bad shape, lying there on the ground. And by chance, by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed on the other side. I want to say right now that religion without compassion is bad. Religion that does not have compassion. He was a priest, and he, he saw the man's need, and he did nothing about it. He didn't hug him. He didn't wash his wound. He didn't give him a little drink. He gave him nothing. He walked across on the other side of the street and, and, looked, and looked the other way. And, and Jesus, Jesus is the one that gave the story. He passed on the other side. He says, likewise, uh, a Levite, when it works in the temple, assists in the temple work. When he was at the place, he came and he looked on him, but he passed on the other side. Now, this one did a little better. He did come over and look down on top of him. And after he looked at him, he then got on the other side. And he passed by. 
So two religious people, one of the high religion, one of the low religion, they came. But a certain Samaritan, <laughs> that, that's up in Samaria there, and, and there are those, those half-breeds that we were talking about. A certain Samaritan, he journeyed and came where he was. And when that Samaritan saw the wounded man, he had compassion on him. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, poured in oil and wine, set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, a hotel, and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took two pence, a uh, pence those days was a day's, a day's labor, a Roman pence was a day's labor, gave him two days labor, and gave them to the host and said, take care of him, whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I'll pay you that too. He was liberal. Then Jesus looked at the people and says, Now, which of these three thinkest thou was the neighbor? And they said, The one that showed him mercy. Jesus came to show mercy to those that are helped. And religion that doesn't show mercy is not Jesus' religion. Jesus found gratitude from a Samaritan. And in Luke 17, 11, it tells a story. It came to pass as he went to Jerusalem. He passed through Samaria and Galilee, and, and he entered into a certain village, and there were ten men that were lepers. And they stood afar off and lifted up a voice, saying, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, now make a little line under that. As they went, you don't get healed if you don't have action. If you don't have action, you don't get healed. If you're going to just stand around with your arms folded, you're never going to get anything from God. It says, and as they went, they were cleansed. They were not cleansed when they started. They got cleansed as they walked. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice, he glorified God. Fell down on his face at his, Jesus' feet and gave him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? And there was not found that returned to give glory to God, save this stranger, the only one that came back to thank God. It is so easy to be ungrateful. But Jesus came to help the needy, all needy, total needy. And that's his business today. And that's the business of his church, to bless the have-nots and to love those that are in great need and to bless those that have not been blessed. And God help us to be a good church and a good people and good Christians, and be what Jesus would have us to be. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Lord, bless these that study, and bless these that learn. And this learning gets inside of us, and we begin to live what we've learned. And so bless these that we shall be like Jesus, and we shall do the things that Jesus did, and that we shall be prompted from the inside to say we're going to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. And for your blessings, we thank you in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. And God bless you. If you would like a copy of today's teaching on audio cassette, send a contribution of $5 or more to LaCie, Box 12, South Bend, Indiana, 46624. Please mention the program number on your screen when ordering. A free catalog of Dr. Sumrall's tapes and books is also available through this address. The production of this program was made possible through private contributions to LaCie. This has been a LaCie Broadcasting Network production.